read. Welcome to Log Furniture How To, the most all inclusive site on the net for log and rustic furniture, fixtures, and decor. That's logfurniturehowto.com. Welcome to the Salem Carpentry YouTube channel. My name is Scott Schaefer, and as you can tell by my warm threads, it's a beautiful day here in Colorado. So today, I'm going to show you how to spin tenons on a lathe. Now, I have shown you two other ways to make tenons. You can use the log clamp, or you can use the lathe with uh, the draw knife and doing it by hand, or you can use the lathe and actually use the lathe as a lathe and spin the log and carve this with a knife and then and then sand it. If you want to see how to uh, do either of those other options, other two options, you can click on the links at the end of this video. Uh, but for now, I'm going to show you how to do it this way. Just keep in mind that when you do things that are fast, uh, you're generally not going to get as good of a product. Carving stuff by hand is going to take the longest, but it's going to give you the best results. Carving a tenon with a tenon cutter is going to be really fast, but it's going to give you the worst results. This is kind of somewhere in the middle, um, and it takes a little bit of extra uh, styling with the uh, carving knife uh, when you're spinning it uh, to get it to look like you carved it by hand. Uh, tenon cutters, it's impossible to make them look like you carved it by hand. Uh, so this is a good alternative uh, to speed up your work a little bit. Alright, so the tools you're going to need for the lathe, uh, first of all, the lathe and also an inch and five-eighths pattern. Uh, the reason it's inch and five-eighths is because that's the size hole I drilled in my legs, uh, which the tendons are going to be going into. Um, you also need a knife. You know, I'm not really a lathe expert. Uh, this is really the only thing that I use a lathe for, is to make tenons. So this is the only knife I use, and I don't even know what it's called. So if you are a lathe expert and would like to tell everybody what this knife is called, please uh, comment below and uh, and please tell us all what, what this is called so when people go to the store they know what to ask for. Uh, we're going to need your draw knife uh, so you can take off any bark. You need your sanders. So I have I have two sanders. One's got the 120 and one's got 180 and uh, and that's it for this. You also might need a handsaw to cut off uh, knots or something if those are in the way. So, Alright, let's get started. I already got one done. I got three to go. Get started by putting it on the lathe and get it centered on those pins. We're just going to start off very gradual at first uh, to get rid of the bark. Uh, be careful because the bark will kind of go flying all over the place, so uh, watch yourself. You also want to make sure that your log is not going to fly off the, the lathe too, so that's a good idea to start slow. So we're going to do the first one. Just carve it back um, very gradually and get that shape that you like until uh, the pattern fits on uh, about a little bit deeper than what your hole is going to be for the, for the tenon. Make sure it's nice and stug, snug. Um, the further it gets up the log, the more snug it gets. Doesn't matter if it's a little loose right up front. Then we're just going to sand it down with the 80 grit sandpaper. And I'm not going to touch the, the dimensional tenon with the 80 grit because it'll take, it could uh, throw it off a little bit. So then we're going to go back with the 120, and this time I am very lightly going to sand the tenon just to smooth it out and get the end grains off. But you want to focus most of your attention on the carved part of the log that's not the tenon um, and get those end grains off. So you can see it's uh, real nice and shapely now. Now we're going to do a little, slightly bigger log, uh, but the same process with that. So have your pattern ready on there. Reset your support bar, get it moving. You can see it's, the table's vibrating a little bit because it's kind of a wobbly log. Anytime you have a log that's uh, that's got some big knots or it's got some shape to it, you're going to get a lot of vibration. So you can see now an aerial view of how I'm shaping it. And that pattern actually leaves a little crease in the tenon, so you can see when you, when you turn it back on again to carve more, you can see where to start from. You just carve behind that line. Alright, so I just want to point out that uh, what we're doing here is we're gradually carving away that log, like I've said. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it look like we're carving it with the blade. So you want to have that same shape that you would get if you were carving it by hand with the blade. A nice gradual shape. A tenon cutter is going to give you a very abrupt, it's going to be very straight, uh, perfect diameter here like a, like a spindle. And then it's going to uh, go like at a 45 or 30 degree angle. Um, and then it, 
and then it's going to go, you know, whatever the natural shape of the log is. Uh, so you're going to have no smooth transitions. So what we're trying to do is we're just trying to imitate uh, the draw knife and, and not try to imitate the uh, tenon cutter. And what that's going to do uh, is it, it is just like the tenon cutter, is it's going to leave us with these end fibers in the log. And uh, if you're using a tenon cutter, because there's no gradual curve to it, you cannot sand that out without, without messing up your, your diameter. Um, but this way, because it's gradual, we can sand it out and uh, uh, it'll look really nice. Safety tip here, when you put your pattern on there to see how it fits, make sure the log is not spinning anymore, because if it is spinning, it could catch and twirl around and hit you in the knuckles or fly off or whatever. It kind of gets a little dangerous, so make sure the log is, has stopped spinning when you put your pattern on there. Now the pattern is going to wear out a little bit, and it's gonna, the hole is going to grow slightly uh, the more tendons you make. That's not necessarily a bad thing, um, it just means that you're... Uh, your tenon is going to be slightly bigger, which means it will fit even tighter in the holes in the legs. Now eventually you're going to get to the point where it won't fit at all. Um, and in that case, you'll either want to just judge um, how you sand it and make it uh, a little bit looser in that pattern, or just make a new pattern. But when you sand it with a 120, it will shrink it down a little bit back to size. And so having a little bit of a loose or um, a tight fit in a slightly enlarged pattern isn't a bad thing if that made any sense whatsoever. It will when you start doing it. You'll think, oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> That's a good looking log, isn't it? I like this one. All right, guys, that's how you carve a tenon, uh, spinning it on the lathe like that. Again, uh, this is all I use the lathe for. Um, this was actually handed down to me from my grandfather, so it's really old, but uh, I love this lathe. Uh, wouldn't trade it up for nothing. If I was to get into professional lathe work, spinning, you know, fancy legs or whatever for fine furniture, then yeah, this probably wouldn't cut it. But it's great for holding on to logs, uh, and it's great for spinning these tenons. Um, so if you're a, if you're a real lathe enthusiast, um, please feel free to leave videos or comments uh, attached to this video so that other people can see how it's really supposed to be done on a lathe because I understand that the way I'm using the lathe probably is making a few of you uh, scream and pull out your hair. Maybe. I don't know. Alright guys, that's it. Oh, if you want to see how to carve the, uh, the tenon on the lathe using a draw knife, so like bigger logs um, by hand, uh, click on this link right here. And if you want to see how to carve a tenon on the log clamp, which is this guy right back here, uh, click on this link right here and that will take you over there. Otherwise, please subscribe to the channel and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much, bye. The music you heard in this video was performed by Colorado pianist Lacey Black. To find out more about Lacey, you can visit her website at laceyblack.net or find her on Facebook.